giant woolly mammoth bones, Neanderthal remains, victims of brutal human sacrifices, caves are full of some of the most haunting and exciting archaeological finds in the world. And this is pretty exciting, a very recent discovery, thousands of prehistoric bones in a cave in northeastern Spain. This story just came out back in February. So the cave is called Cova del Zargals, hope I'm pronouncing that right, probably not, but this is a very new discovery so I, I couldn't really find a proper English pronunciation of it. But it seemed to have been used as a burial site for thousands of years, from the Neolithic period to the Bronze Age, about seven to 3,000 years ago. During an excavation in December of 2023, the team from Catalan Institute of Human Paleoecology and Social Evolution found over 7,000 human skeletal remains. They also discovered a lot of animal bones and pieces of pottery. People were using this cave for burials for over four millennia. The archaeologists found people of all ages buried with artifacts made of ceramic, stone, and bronze. One part of the cave has even older remains too, wild goat bones and charcoal that date back over 40,000 years. So Neanderthals might have been hanging out long before humans were in this cave. Another very recent discovery, this one in Poland, a cave full of mammoth bones. In Poland's Paradise Cave, researchers found hundreds of prehistoric animal bones, cave lions and mammoths. Malgorzata Kot from the University of Warsaw is leading the current research. She explained that the cave was first studied in the 60s, but technology has advanced so much that they can learn a lot more about what's in there now. One of the goals of the new research is to understand how the climate and environment in southern Poland changed from 60,000 to 14,000 years ago and how these changes affected the humans living there. They hadn't even been excavating for long when they found some pretty incredible stuff. Bones from woolly rhinos, mammoths, cave lions, and cave bears, horses, and tons of reindeer antlers. Which doesn't sound all that interesting in comparison, but turns out it actually might be. They've documented around 200 large, well-preserved bones. Cott mentioned that the size of the reindeer antlers was surprising. They're small, but mostly whole, and the theory is that humans may have been using them as tools. Obviously, they can't be 100% sure for what, but one hypothesis they're investigating right now is that Neanderthals might have used the antlers to create barricades for cave entrances, which is pretty cool. In 2009, researchers made a really cool discovery in a cave in Germany. They found 13 bone fragments that belonged to Homo sapiens, modern humans who lived there around 45,000 years ago. This is the oldest known remains of our species in Central and Northwest Europe. These early humans were living in pretty harsh conditions. The climate back then was freezing, similar to what you'd find in Siberia or Northern Scandinavia today. This was a pretty impressive find because it showed that even back then, humans were finding ways to handle such tough environments. And the discovery really changed how scientists used to think of the timeline of our history. Turned out Homo sapiens were in Europe much earlier than we thought and were coexisting with Neanderthals for thousands of years. Neanderthals were already in Europe long before, from at least 200,000 years ago until they were extinct around 40,000 years ago. The bone fragments came from a cave in Rannes, Germany. Along with the bones, the researchers found stone tools and animal bones. It looked like these early humans hunted reindeer, woolly rhinoceros, and horses. In 2013, a team of scientists led by paleoanthropologist Lee Berger uncovered a remarkable collection of hominid fossils in the Rising Star cave system in South Africa. This discovery included a new species of human ancestor named Homo naledi. There were tons of these fossils, which dated back to the Middle Pleistocene, and they were excellently preserved. The Rising Star discovery was another major discovery because it really changed how researchers thought about the burial practices and overall brain power of early hominids. The chamber where the fossils were found was only accessible through a very challenging passage, so it was likely that these bodies were deliberately placed there. And this really expanded our understanding of hominid behavior here 
during this period. All right, so this kind of sounds like a cave you'd find on the island King Kong lived on, but it's actually in China. And what archaeologists found was pretty incredible. Giant sized bones from a number of different prehistoric animals. It was in southern China that archaeologists discovered a cave called Pengxiang Dadong filled with massive bones that belonged to over 40 different ancient species of mammals. There were bones of ancient rhinos, elephant like stegodons, and what excites me the most, bones from a creature often referred to as the real life Bigfoot, Gigantopithecus. The cave's entrance is 1600 feet above sea level, with only a steep rock face leading up to it, making it a mystery as to how these huge animals would have ended up there. Among all these bones, some showed signs of burning and cutting, which means that ancient humans might have been involved. It looks like they were responsible for bringing these massive animals to the cave, which is impressive in itself. In 2009, archaeologists exploring Toemim Cave in Jerusalem stumbled on a pretty incredible find. Deep inside the cave, they found human skulls, oil lamps, bronze daggers. It's not hard to figure out that rituals were happening here, but what's even more interesting is that these were necromancy rituals, communications with the dead. They discovered 120 oil lamps dating back to the late 2nd to 4th century CE. These lamps were placed in hidden, hard to reach spots, meaning they weren't just for lighting up the cave. And alongside the lamps, they found weapons like daggers and axe heads and three human skulls, but no other bones. So these skulls had likely been transported from somewhere else. Ancient scrolls from the same era describe spells and customs for honoring the cave. They talked about restraining and sealing the mouths of skulls and raising spirits using them. Researchers realized that these spells matched the artifacts found in Toimim Cave. At the time, the cave was thought to be a gateway to the underworld, and the lamps were believed to lure spirits to the realm of the living. These bones here belong to a poor soul that's been dubbed the Crystal Maiden, found in Actun Tunikil Muknal in Belize. The bones have been laying in place for over a thousand years. It's called the Crystal Maiden, but these bones actually belonged to a young man. They just thought they were lady bones at first. There are tons of human remains in this cave. The ancient Maya used it for ceremonial rituals including human sacrifices. But of all the remains in the cave, the Crystal Maiden is particularly grim. See, this dude died in a pretty brutal fashion. His vertebrae were smashed, and by the looks of it, he died pretty violently before being tossed to the ground where he's remained ever since. But there is an odd kind of beauty to these bones as well. They're calcified, giving them that sparkly appearance, kind of like a crystal hence the name. Next are bones of a serial killer found in a cave in Idaho. So they may not be prehistoric in the classical sense, but if we're approaching this in a less literal way, they are pretty ancient, and the story behind this is pretty wild. Joseph Henry Loveless was a notorious criminal. Back in 1916, he got locked up because folks thought he'd hacked up his wife with an axe. Seemed like he was living up to his last name. Loveless managed to escape from jail by using a tiny saw blade he'd hidden in his shoe. After that, he vanished and was never seen again. Alive, that is. It wasn't until 1979 that a family visiting Buffalo Cave in Idaho came across a torso stuffed in a burlap sack. Fast forward to 1991, and a hand was found, then two legs and an arm. Then in 2009, DNA tests were done. No one was 100% sure, but there was this theory floating around that all these remains belonged to one man, Joseph Henry Loveless. To confirm, Loveless's grandson, who was 87 at the time, gave a DNA sample, and it turned out that the dismembered body did belong to Loveless. Over a century after he had escaped jail, his remains had finally been identified. How did he die though? Well, it's pretty obvious that someone had taken the law into their own hands. Homo gardarensis, a mysterious set of bone fragments, were discovered in Greenland at a burial site in Gardar, a 12th century Norse settlement. The hype came from the discovery of a big jaw and skull fragment. And when scientists first laid eyes on the bones, they weren't sure what sort of human they were really dealing with. At first, it was thought to be a part of a Homo heidelbergensis, Others thought it could have been a Neanderthal type creature or a heavily inbred Norseman. Enter Sir Arthur Keith. 
who took a closer look and discovered that the bone fragments belonged to a regular human with acromegaly, a condition causing abnormal growth. But there are still theories floating around questioning this. Mark A. Hall, a cryptozoologist, points out that the teeth don't match the acromalagy story. Hall, being in the business of studying mysterious creatures, throws a curveball into this whole mix. He believes that the thing likely was closer to what scientists initially believed, a uh, representative of what he refers to as trolls, similar to Sasquatches or Yetis. But obviously that theory is highly suspect. In 2021, researchers identified a brand new species of dinosaur exclusive to Greenland with the help of well-preserved skulls. So the species was dubbed E.C. Senek, meaning cold bone in Greenlandic Inuit. These creatures would have roamed the land during the late Triassic period, around 214 million years ago. The skulls were first discovered in 1994, and for years, scientists thought they belonged to a Plateosaurus, but recent research pointed to these skulls having belonged to an entirely different species, which is pretty exciting, a new dinosaur. Victor Bakari, who authored the paper on the research, stated, the anatomy of the two skulls is unique in many respects. For example, in the shape and proportions of the bones, these specimens certainly belong to a new species. Researchers had performed a micro CT scan on the bones, then a digital model was created showing what the skull would have looked like if fully formed. The E.C. Senec were two-legged herbivores, medium-sized and shared many similarities with sauropods who we're all pretty familiar with, having been featured in Jurassic Park and countless dinosaur picture books you probably grew up with. This recently discovered species had long necks as well. They were just considerably smaller than their more famous counterparts. So some pretty awesome discoveries made in caves here. Let us know down below if we missed anything. What were some of your favorites on this list? And with all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.